All right, guys, I'm uh, Saturday, so I'm going to replace my water pump and the Jeep. Um, haven't really done anything so far. The only thing I've done is take out my messed up, messed up fan shroud, which uh, I got the side piece, the top zip tied, and then another side piece. Um, yeah, I need a new one. I've been needing a new one for years now, but this is what I got right now. Um, so here's the water pump. I went digging for it and found it. Gasket and water pump. Like I said, I've had this one for a while now. A good while. Um, so, uh, I'm going to take everything apart and and then go into town and get a new thermostat, new thermostat gasket. I'm going to go ahead and get a new water pump outlet tube. Because I know AutoZone sells those. Uh, I don't know if the one closest to me has it or if I have to go all the way to the, the old the store I used to work at. Because I know they have one, or they had one, uh, when I was still working there. Um, so, yeah. Got to take off the belt, take off the fan, take off the uh, auxiliary cooling fan, and I think I can take this one out without taking the without moving this bracket. Um, I think this is designed to where I can take it out without taking this whole bracket off. So I'll try that. I'll be back when I got some more stuff off. Alrighty, I'm a little bit more into it. This thing is a pain in the butt to get off. Holy crap. I had to use two screwdrivers and a pry bar. I used the screwdrivers to bang between this plate and the pulley. And then once I got a good quarter inch gap between all the sides, I still had to stick the pry bar in there and yank on it to get this thing to fall off. I'm going to have to take a grinder, flatten that out. And smooth that pulley back out. Dag gum. That was way too tight. Uh, now let me loosen these bolts up and then I can take the belt off. This might actually not be that hard. Um, of course I say that and now it's going to take a freaking hour just to get it out. Um... I know I'm gonna have to loosen these bolts. I might not have to take it out though. This design is slightly different, but I think I will still have to at least loosen those bolts up, maybe loosen this bracket up. That might be it. Anyway. I'll be back. Alrighty. The water pump is out. And no, you don't need to remove the water pump bracket, or the, excuse me, the power steering pump bracket for this for this model. You can lever it out just enough, you can pull it out. Um, so you just have to take these two mounting bolts out. Water pump's got four bolts, one here, one here, one down here, one over here. This one right here goes actually into the water jacket. So this one's going to need a thread sealant. Your uh, thermostat housing is held in here and here. Neither, neither one of these go into a water jacket, so you don't need any sealant on these. But you do need a thread sealant on this one right here because it goes right into this water jacket. Um, the bolts, this is the one that goes in the bottom. See, it's a little, just a little bit long. See? They're, about the same. They're about the same size. This is the one that goes in the water jacket. That's the one you're going to need thread sealant on. This is the one on the top, and then this is the one on the side. Really the long one. So it looks like about three are the same size. And then one of them's long. Uh, same thing with the thermostat housing. The thermostat housing one on the bottom short. The one on the top is really long because it goes from outside to inside. <clears throat> so here's a little pump. I'm gonna go ahead and buy a new output tube because I'm AutoZone should should sell those. Uh, I need to buy another gasket scraper. I can't find mine. 
there is the weep hole right there and uh, you see right there there's drainage on it and I don't know if it's going to show up in the camera well it kind of does but right there you can see a bit of a uh, residue if you look down on the inside you can see more on the inside <coughs> those on you see it better but so yeah I'm still 99% sure this is what's leaking I don't see anything on the block that makes it seem like there it was leaking around the water pump um, so this water pump I think is fairly new uh, well, I don't know the inside of it's really clean so is that that's clean again I don't know if this is the factory water pump or a0204 actually well no there's no st well, yeah there is a stamping in it this might be an AutoZone water pump because I have I've had I have had the radiator replaced and I'm actually seeing some seeping in my radiator up here at the top and then over here at the bottom I put the uh, the black light on it and it, it's a little bit of a color but it's not a lot um, so I'm not going to be getting, getting a radiator right now, but that's in the near future. Um, yeah, I don't know, this might be, well, no, because it's not, I mean, A2, A4 is what's on this, A2, A2 is what's on that. And that could just mean it's different castings, you know, different blocks, uh, casting blocks. Because they produce multiples of these at the same time and they just put different numbers on them. Who knows? It could be an AutoZone water pump. But again, I don't know if they put a water pump on when they uh, did my radiator. Because I, I have had my radiator replaced. I had my radiator, radiator replaced not long after I got it, before I was even driving it. Um, my dad was driving it at the time because I didn't have my license. Because I got it when I was 15. And I didn't do any repairs on it then. Actually, the only thing that I haven't done to this thing, I had the radiator replaced once that I didn't do. I had one of the injectors replaced that I didn't do. And after I started driving, I went to full parts and had them replace my uh, uh, pinion seal on my axle. Uh, besides that, and I had somebody put a uh, that that same the same people that did the radiator, the injector, they they put a compressor on because when I first got the thing, compressor wasn't uh, working right. Other than that, I've done everything on it. Um, and those people who did the radiator the compressor and the injector were you know, people that we knew um he has a he has a, a shop and a record company but he did it um again i was like 15 or 16 um so you know i wasn't i wasn't working on it then um but everything since then if i'm remembering right that's the only thing that i the only three things besides the uh the oil seal on the, the pinion for my front differential. I did that when I was. I don't think I was. I was still in high school. I think I was a senior, a junior or senior when I had that done. But anyway, I've done everything else on this thing. So, oh well. Time to run to the parts store because I need to get me. I'm gonna go ahead and get me a new uh, thermostat. I need to get me a new thermostat seal. I'm gonna try to get this output tube. Uh, I need to get another gasket scraper. I need to get get some more coolant. So, uh, so yeah, I'll be back. Alrighty, back from the park store. I got me another gasket scraper because I couldn't find my other one. I'll probably find it tonight, maybe. This one's slightly different than my other one. The other, my other one had a nice kind of soft grip to it. This is, has a you know, plastic grip, you know, they go cheaper every year. 
This is that uh, water outlet piece I was telling you about. It actually says a water pump inlet, which, to be honest, it's actually an outlet because that's pressure water coming out of it. Um, but that's the dormant part number right there. That is, and it's only like 14 bucks or something like that. That is, so you don't have to get this old piece out, which might be old and crusty and who knows how, how you know. Plus, trying to get it out of that might probably come out pretty easy. You know, live down in the south. Don't get that much. You get rust if you don't clean your stuff, but, you know, it's not like up north. Um, so this already has sealing on it. Just take it. Put it in there until you have it the right way. And, you know, till it's kind of tight, because that should be pipe threads. I think it's pipe threads. Um, so it should be tapered. Anyway, there's a, seal, there's a sealing on there, so just tighten it down until it's almost tight. And then make sure you have it right, facing the right way, and then just let it sit. This is uh, the thread sealant to put on that bolt right here. Uh, I got a new radiator cap. Just, I uh, have a locking not a lock it's not a locking cap but it's a you know, it's got a the lever on it that's the one I got in my Yukon uh, I thought I might as well change the cap because this cap probably as old as the radiator which is the radiator is about 10 years old probably nine years eight or nine years old and there was a whole bunch of sediment on the seal so I went ahead and got this one it's the same one I got on my Jeep I have had, had the one in my Jeep for three something years it hasn't acted up or done anything at all the good thing about this cap is that if you want to release the pressure you just take and lift this up and it releases the pressure to your overflow so if you need to get in it when it's hot you don't have to come over here with a big rag and let it out and then let it spew everywhere you can just let it you can let it out in, in a controlled manner manner and I got some RTV put a little bit of RTV on the gasket and then I got a 180 degree thermostat which is the thermostat that I had in there my old thermostat was 180 degrees I like a little bit of a cooler thermostat so it doesn't run as hot in the summer. Um, even though it's going to run 210 anyway. But I like it to be 180. Um, it it doesn't, the 180 doesn't affect the uh, the uh, temperature that much. It doesn't affect the heater that much in the winter. Uh, the 180 degree you still get plenty of cooling. Uh, pr plenty of heat, I mean, in the uh, in the winter. Um, I had a 160 in there one time in the winter, and it does not work. A 190, well, 195, which is the factory one, you know, will do great in the winter. But uh, this one still does good, too, in the winter. Um, that should be it. Now I got to... I also got some, uh, got some coolant. I forgot to get that from the shop Friday, so I went ahead and went and got some while I was at AutoZone. But, uh... And here's a pump. It's all nice and tight, which is something I can't say about the old one. You can spin this one, and it's it's loosey, it's loosey goosey, and kind of makes some noise. And there's a little bit of it's loose. Not uh, not very loose, but it's loose enough that the seal for the uh, to, for the weep hole went out. So yeah, <sighs> let me start getting this back together. Hell, let me start getting this back together. Alrighty, got the gasket surfaces clean. Oops, got them all clean. There's some pitting, got some pitting in the, uh, up there, up here, there's some pitting. I think there's a little bit of pitting down here, but not a lot. Uh, got the uh, arm on the water pump. These, those angle pieces with the Brillo pads work wonders on cleaning up gasket surfaces. Yeah, I don't have the that 3M makes little bristle brushes that are quote unquote better because uh, they don't remove any metal at all whatsoever. Uh, but if you're really careful with one of these, with 
a, not a sanding disc, but one of the little the scuffing pads, like one of these little scuffing pads, and the lightest abrasion, which I think is that tan color, um, you barely remove any metal. Also, you're basically buffing the surface of the metal and removing the gasket material. I scraped on it, got the big pieces off, but then there were some pieces I just couldn't get off. So I knew I bought one of those and I had to dig it out, so spent a couple minutes finding that. And uh, um, I did that. I did both the, the thermostat and the water pump, around the water pump. Got every piece of gasket off of it. Then I came over here where I roughed up the, uh, the belt. Uh, the uh, pulley. See all those gashes? I went and flattened all those gashes down. And also on this surface, uh, there's some gashes around the outside I flattened out. So, uh, and also the water pump housing. I went and flattened the water pump housing out too. There's some pitting in the water pump housing too. So, uh, the next time this thing will need a thermostat or a water pump, and I'm probably going to get another uh, water outlet. But, uh, yeah, now all I gotta do is put the water pump in, put the gasket on the water, put a little bit of sealer on the gasket. I know some people say you don't need any sealer. I'd rather not do go through this whole thing again. So, and besides, with that right there, RTV is nothing. It just, it, it comes right off, so... Yeah, it takes a little bit longer. If you, it was just a gasket with no RTV on it, you could just take it and peel it off, and that's it. You know, like I said, I don't care. I got, <laughs> I'd rather it, put it together and have it not leak because of a faulty gasket. So, put up. I barely put any on it. It almost nothing. The water pump, the the um, excuse me, the <clears throat> um. Thermostat gasket, I only put put it on put it on the back. I put a little bit on the back. I didn't put any on the front because it already has a sealing surface on it. Uh, yeah, there's already a sealing surface on the front, so I, I I don't think I put any on the front. I knew I put some on the back just to hold it in. So what I'm going to do this time when I put the, the thermostat on. So uh, yeah, let me get this. Uh, Get ready to get this in. I'll be back. And that's it. There's just a very, 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 very thin coat on there. Basically, I put a very, very thin bead most of the way around it. And then I just took my gloves and just flattened it all out. I did the same thing on the other side. And it's just, basically, it's to glue, to get, glue the gasket to this so when I put it on, it doesn't move. And then... You know, once I get it on to seal the surface, I mean, that's that's it. There's, that's all that's on there. So, let me get the pump on. Let me dry the pump surface if I can find some paper towels. I think there's some in either my Jeep or my Yukon. Uh, and then I'll put this on. And there's the water pump on. And the bypass tube. With the... Uh, heater core connect to it. All the bolts are tightened down, water pump, or excuse me, power steering pumps tightened down, and the uh, lower radiator hose is tight. So, and all I gotta do is put the pulley on it, and then put the, put the fan pulley on it, and then route the belt and somewhat snug up the belt and then put the fan on and then I can tighten everything down so uh, I'll do that and there we go got my fan back in I don't, yeah got my fan back in got that all bolted down accessory fans in water pump is in and tightened down uh, with the water pump pulley thermostats in tighten down the belt. I still need to put tension on the belt Darn it. I should have done did that before I put that in uh, That's gonna be fun getting that tightening the uh, Tightening that down it's gonna be fun but also 
you know, it's my fan shroud. I went and bolted it down. I already had it zip tied, but the, it had come loose. So I put, drilled two holes next to each other, tightened it down as far as, as hard as I could, and put this top piece on top of where it originally cracked. <laughs> uh, I'll probably come back with some epoxy and put epoxy over that later on, but it cracked and where there was a shelf. It cracked where there was a shelf, so I just put the broken piece on top of the broken piece and then zip tied it really tight. Same thing over here, right here. I don't know if you can see that. I don't know, I don't know what all you can see. But same thing over here, zip tied it really close together, tightened it up really tight. So it's pretty much tight again. I still don't have the bottom piece, but it's a lot better than it was. Um, so, yeah, I'm pretty much done. I just got to put that on that, put this on that, on that, um, and finish tightening up the belt. And then put coolant in it. And I'll be done. So I'll be back. Alrighty. Everything in. Everything's in. Everything's tight. Uh, everything's all bolted down. Both pulleys are tight. So uh, I'm filling her up right now. Waiting for the uh, thermostat to open. And once the thermostat opens, that's going to be sucked down. Uh, there's still air in the system, though. I mean, uh, I didn't fully fill the radiator. That's kind of what I'm doing right now. But at the same time, I'm waiting for the thermostat to open. Once the thermostat opens, that thing's going to suck down. And uh, now I'm just trying to balance between uh, full strength and uh, water because I don't know how much is I got left. You know, I don't know how much drained out. So I'm kind of going back and forth. Um, Usually after a flush, what I read, oh, there it goes, thermostat open. But uh, what I read is that if you do a flush, you flush it out, then you drain the radiator, and then you put a gallon and a half of uh, coolant, and then fill the rest up with water. So that's kind of what I'm doing right now. Um, well, I'm going to pause this so I can fill that back up. I'll be back when it's all bled. Alright guys, this is actually a couple days later. This is actually um, Monday night. I started to uh, get all the video files together to edit the video and I was like, I didn't do an ending. So, uh, so yeah. Um, Sunday night, went and drove it. Sunday night I went and drove it. Um, Sunday night. Saturday night, after I put the water pump in, drove it in town, got something to eat, came back, checked for leaks, didn't find anything, checked the overflow, overflow was still full, so um, drove it into town Sunday, same thing, no problems, drove it to work today and back, and no problems, um, see how low my overflow is now, Ooh, this ain't bad, it's still full, I had it all the way up to the top, like it was all the way up at the top so uh, and it's uh, right there that line right there and the full mark is way down where the, my finger is right here so it's got a good two, two three inches so um, uh, yeah there's uh, Thermostat housing. There's some of the the gasket maker. Um, there's my water pump down there. Again, no problems, no leaks. Um, I don't see any leaks. I didn't see any leaks today when I when I went to lunch. I didn't see any leaks. Uh, I didn't see any leaks Sunday. I didn't see any leaks Monday. So uh, as far as I'm concerned, it's fixed. The next big project on this thing is going to be getting a radiator. Um, like I said, I got—I might have said it. I don't remember if I said it or not. I noticed with the black light that was a little tiny, very very tiny seep on this side where the uh, 
the the main fins meet the 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 crossbar the crossbar meet the 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 tanks on the side um, where the plastic connects to um, it's still you know aluminum it's all or brass whatever it's probably all aluminum it's all you know soldered together one of those solder joints a couple of those solder joints or one of the solder joints on um, one of those tubes is seeping a very very tiny bit but it's seeping um, so it's a tiny leak and, and it's not going to be something you're going to be able to see but I could see it with the uh, with the black light again and on this side there I think it's down at the bottom there is also a very tiny seep um, but I mean it's you know it's nothing to be concerned about right now but I'm looking at my options right now on going with another factory style three core like like I have now which has lasted a good you know seven years seven eight years I don't know when it started seeping. I, you know, I just noticed it now. But, um, you know, either get another one just like it or get the same one. Uh, contact the, the guy who uh, had uh, got the work done and see if he remembers which radiator he bought. Um, or I could go with a uh, CSF all metal radiator. They've they've gone up. They used to be around 170 bucks. Now it's around 150. Uh, but it's it's all it's all metal. It's all um, uh, I think I'm pretty sure it's copper and metal, you know, copper and aluminum. I, I don't remember exactly, but it's all metal. I was looking at them this afternoon. It's all metal, completely metal. Um, and uh, are going with a complete aluminum radiator. I'm looking at those too. Um, the flex light one's out of my price range. Minimum six hundred dollars for a flex for a flex light. Flex light. Um, the ones I was looking at were around two hundred bucks or so. Um, you know, just kind of looking around. Um, but what I am going to do is I am going to get electric fans. Um, I'm going to go ahead when I get the radiator. I'm going to go ahead and go complete electric fans. I'm probably going with the Dakota Digital. Uh, 2790 25 something the, whatever the the coded digital uh, fan controller uh, I'm most likely going to go with that um, I need to look on the side of my block I think on the side of the block down at the bottom there is a um, spot where the Rainex Air Jeeps which are the um early 80s to, to 90 uh, where they used to get their temperature um, so I can tap in there I can always get the, the block for the top hose and put my own sensor in there but um, so supposedly you can use the factory sensor with the Dakota Digital so I might try to go that route also and then I'm gonna get a, a three uh, I think nine inch fans uh, three nine-inch fans and the decoded digital controller, and uh, go that way. Get rid of my mechanical fan, um, and you know, which is something I've been wanting to do. Get rid of my mechanical fan. Same thing on the on the Yukon. At some point, I'm going electric fans on the Yukon also, and that will help a ton because with the AC on on that thing, the thing's like, you know, it's 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 not very sporty anyway. Um, because there's a big truck and it's lifted and everything like that, but you know you could tell the difference when the when the when the clutch fan kicks in on the Yukon. It's it's just outrageous how much power that clutch fan uh, robs. But I mean it makes sense because the only fan on that thing is a clutch fan. There's no auxiliary cooling fan like like this one's got. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, this is just for the end of the video. Everything so far is fine. Driving it for two days. Um, you know, no leaks that I can see, no leaks that I'm just dripping down, you know, nothing like that, so, uh, and plus an end of the video, so, uh, I don't know what I'll be doing next, what I'll be uploading next, or, you know, I got, uh, oil cooler lines for the Yukon, so I might do oil, 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 blah, 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 oil cooler lines on the Yukon next week, end, 
um, who knows, but, uh, yeah, um, so I'll see y'all next time, and talk to y'all later.